My answer is very simple. There is something called general consensus. There is a general consensus amongst all the scholars of the Muslim Ummah from the time and until, the, until today so far uh, that the book of Al-Imam al-Bukhari, the collection of a hadith which Al-Imam al-Bukhari collected, is considered to be the most sound book after the Qur'an. The hadith, brothers and sisters, is the statement of the Prophet ﷺ, or his actions, or his approvals, which have been recorded and reported uh, repeatedly with a continuous testimony in many cases by the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. So if we get back to the origin, which is the Prophet ﷺ has said it, and it is confirmed that he has said so, because many companions have reported that, then we say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an, وَمَا يَنْطِقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَى So are you having doubt concerning the hadith itself or concerning the narration or the chain of the narrators? When one suggests something like that, at least, at least you should really try to learn a little bit about the science of hadith. If you study a little bit about the science of hadith and what is the definition of a sound hadith versus a weak hadith, and what is the meaning of uh, morsal hadith, etc. It can help you to answer this question. You cannot just simply recline on a couch and say, yeah, I guess uh, this hadith is not sound. We've faced a lot of challenges like that. There are some hadith where even scholars denied its authority and its soundness simply because they thought it comes in conflict with science. And we said repeatedly, science, nowadays science is mere theories. It changes in no time. Uh, once you hear a statement, a few weeks later, another study proves the opposite of this recent study and so on. So if we have a hadith, I'll just give you an example, which talks about that if a fly uh, falls in the glass or the food container, water container of any of you, that uh, you should dip it thrice, and then you may drink it. Right away, may, some people take it as this is gross, this is awful, no way that the Prophet could have said so, without reading the remaining part of the hadith where he says that because one of its wings is carrying the poison and the other wing is carrying the exact antidote of that poison. So the Prophet ﷺ is giving us a glimpse of uh, the miraculous, the scientific miracles in the Quran and the Sunnah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed him about it. He did not have uh, uh, a just microscope, not an electronic microscope. He did not have a pathology lab in order to find out whether there is a, a microorganism or a virus in that wing and the antidote in the other wing, none of the above. But it is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who have informed him about many, many things like that. So instead of denying it or putting doubts in it, we need to do this. Study the hadith. Is it proven to be sound as far as the text and the chain of the narrators, yes, then it is sound. I don't care about what science says, because later on, nowadays, in a few years back, science proved the exact statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And many, many cases like that, it's just uh, that the time won't allow us to discuss it in details. Before I start throwing doubts, this is a clock of Satan, to start putting, yeah, maybe there is only 1% uh, error in that book. Okay, which one is it? Okay, so when you read the hadith and you do not like it, you say, that is the 1% which I'm talking about. And you read another hadith which you do not digest, you say the same. Because this is how the shaitan diverts you from seeking knowledge. So, the ijma' of the ummah, that the most sound book after the Qur'an, is Sahih al-Imam al-Bukhari. Who are you to start putting doubts in such book? No one. You have no knowledge whatsoever. If you did, you wouldn't have suggested this suggestion. Now, of course, I'm talking about any person who starts putting doubts in the sound hadith of the Prophet Thank you, Muhammad.